Hi guys and dolls, how are you? Um, hopefully you're good. I'm going to try to adjust you a little bit here, if I can. Whoa! Hopefully that would work. I've got to experiment a little bit. Okay, so, um, I'm going to preface this video by saying if you have an aversion to bodily functions, bleeding bothers you, excessive bleeding, any kind of talk of bodily fluids or anything of that nature, you know, offends you, disturbs you, makes you queasy, this is not the video for you. So you'll need to click away and that's perfectly fine. This isn't going to be for everybody. This is not just for women. This is also for men who have girlfriends, fiancés, and wives because obviously they can have these sort of issues as well. So with all of that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you guys back. Um, subscribers, you are oh, amazing. And for those of you who are not subscribed, why not? Just kidding. Um, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll be notified of future videos. Okay. So I'm going to say probably about, let's see, nine years ago, 10 years ago. I'm just ballparking it because I don't know exactly the, what the time frame is, but it was a, a good while ago. I started having heavy periods and they were getting to the point where they were lasting a lot longer than your average four to five days and it was very erratic um light and then not light and then real heavy all of a sudden out of nowhere and it was just really erratic and it got worse and worse and worse and as you guys know i used to work in the medical field the problem with that is a lot of us do not want to go to the doctor ourselves when something is wrong, probably because we know that it could be a lot of things wrong and we don't want to hear bad news and it's scary. Um, being a patient myself was a phobia, basically. So I called the nurse at, um, I can't remember if it was Planned Parenthood or something, but I did speak to a nurse and she jumped on the cancer page right out the gate. She said, well, we have to do a uterine biopsy to make sure it's not cancerous. And I'm already terrified. And then you're talking cancer to me. So that doesn't make me less terrified. You know what I'm saying? So I just would not seek any medical attention whatsoever. I just blocked it out and decided this is my life. I'm going to have to deal with it. And it got to the point where over the years, oh man, the bleeding got worse and worse and worse and worse every time I had my cycle. And at one point I remember it was a, a period of like 30 days where there was spotting throughout the entire month and I had no idea what that was about. And I'm sure stress exacerbates any symptoms that you have. And I've been under stress for a really long time. We won't even go there. Um, we won't go there. <laughs> Not right now. Anyway. Um, so I just basically, you know, I don't get female exams because I have for number one, I have a phobia for doctors. Number two, I have the mentality. If it's not broken, it doesn't need to be messed with. Leave it alone. So I did not do female exams, which I do not advise that people do. I'm not saying I did this, any of this the right way. I didn't do it the right way. Um, and by the time I did a lot of, drama with my body had occurred that I didn't know about at the time and that was causing my excessive bleeding. So then it got to the point where when I had my cycle, I had to wear four types of protection at the same time. I had to wear, because the bleeding was just out of control 
um, at this point because years and years and years have passed and I'm just like, this is my life. I'll just deal with it. I'll buy extra pads, extra tampons or whatever. Well, it got to the point where none of that was enough because I had to wear four types of protection and you get really creative about that sort of thing. So I would have to use, let me try to remember, I had to use a feminine cup, internal feminine cup and a tampon and two pads at the same time. None of that guarantees that you won't have an accident. Okay. So I want you to imagine like here's your underwear, right? And this is the front and this is the back, right? So I'd have to put a pad this way and I'd have to put another pad across like the letter upside down letter T in addition to the tampons and the pads and the feminine cup. And that, like I said, that did not guarantee that you're not going to have an accident. And then, of course, you have, um, well, I had a few humiliating situations where I'm in school for EMT and I had to leave because my I had an accident on my clothes and, I mean, things were just getting gradually worse for me. Thank God my instructor did not question me. I said, I have to go home. I have to handle something. It's important. I got to go. And he said, no problem. Go do what you got to do. I'm sure he knew it was, you know feminine related anyway so that was embarrassing um and then i remembered this one particular time when i had all four types of protection on and i went to the i, I was in the car and i went to the store and i got out of the car four types of protection mind you four okay and as soon as I got out of the car, gravity was not my friend and you feel a gush and I'm going, no, 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 not now, not now, not now, not now. So now I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should go home because I'm having an issue or if I should just go to the store, grab what I need and hope to God, you know, on a wig and a prayer, hope to God that I didn't make a mess on my clothes. Um, it was just getting to the point where I was literally, and I, I still wouldn't say anything, <laughs> Ugh, just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? <sighs> so it was getting to the point where I had to buy double pads, overnight pads, double. You, you could get them in, in double packs and I would go through that in a month whenever I had my cycle where I would go through the majority of them in one cycle. Um, and it gets outrageously expensive. None of that is cheap. As you all know, pads, tampons are not inexpensive. These companies know you have to have them, so they figure, hey, you're going to do it. You're not going to take a roll of toilet paper and stick it in your underwear, so you got to do what you got to do. So I remember I was at the store. Well, actually, I'm not going to go there yet. No, no, no. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to go there yet. Okay. So finally, after suffering for year after year after year, and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, there's... It's out of control at this point, and I still wouldn't go. So I'm in the doctor's office, and I had just gotten blood work done, or I was in the process of getting it, getting ready to have blood work done, and I just casually mentioned it to the lady who worked in the lab. And I said, yeah, I've got nightmarish periods, and I don't know what that's about, and I have to wear four types of protection at the same time. And she said, did you ever think that you had fibroids? No, I did not. So now I'm like, oh, okay. She said, when was the last time you had a um, a well woman check? I said, I, I don't do that. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't I don't fix it. And she said, well, you, you need to you need to see about that. So I did. I wasn't thrilled, but I did. <laughs> um, and she examined me and she said... There wasn't anything abnormal that she could see internally, okay? Um, guys, give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to turn this overhead fan on. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. It was getting a little toasty in here. Um, so anyway, what happened? Um, so she did an exam. She didn't see anything abnormal on, on the internal exam or anything like that. However, 
is toasty. However, when she uh, pressed on my abdomen where my uterus was, I almost ended up on the ceiling. And she said, how often does that hurt? I said, all the time. And she's like, mm, yeah, that's not good. I am so hot. Holy crap. Hot flashes. Gotta love that. Um, so anyway, um, we've all been there, right? For those of us who experienced that. Anyway, um, I blamed the sensitivity, the abdominal sensitivity, I blamed that on fibro, probably knowing that chances are that's not what it is because that's not a tender point area. So she sent me to a GYN and she's amazing. She's totally amazing. She, um, I said she didn't see anything abnormal internally and then I said when you do when you palpate my abdomen which is when they press on you right when you do that can you be gentle and she looked at me like okay almost like that's a weird request but okay I guess I can do that oh my god how flash is this little warm down here just a little bit um so anyway she pressed a little bit on my abby and of course that was pretty not fun but she didn't press hard but honey this is how good she is she just pressed a little bit with her fingertips and she said your uterus in, is enlarged and I said why she said I don't know that's what we're gonna have to find out we're gonna have to do ultrasound and find out what's going on so she said your uterus should be the size of your fist and yours she pulled out a um, measuring tape or something she said yours is this size I, I mean obviously not that big but it was probably three to four sizes too big it was just ridiculous and she didn't tell me specifics about that she just said it was enlarged so I went ahead and got the ultrasound done um, this is humiliating but it shouldn't be because it's medical right I am not going to go in specifics, but I had an accident um, that day, uh, a bathroom accident, and I had on a white skirt. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, it wasn't an unmanageable accident, and by the grace of God, it did not get on my skirt. I didn't know what the hell was going on, and that had happened not just the day I was at the hospital, but it happened probably seven, eight, nine months prior to that. And I was too terrified and too humiliated to tell my doctor, which isn't smart. You're not doing this on purpose. It's a medical issue. But when you're going through it, you're humiliated. Um, so anyway, so went ahead and did the um, ultrasound and it's it's really nerve-wracking because and I hid the accident from her by the way I hid the accident from everybody anyway awful but anyway um they know what's they can see what's going on with you but they can't tell you anything and they're looking right at it and they still can't freaking tell you oh my god that's nerve-wracking they cannot tell you the doctor by law the doctor has to tell you so that's that was kind of nerve-wracking but anyway um so we talked about the results of it. She said, you have um, fibroids. And I said, okay, so the, you've got a choice. You can have medication to reduce the size of them or whatever. But I, to be quite honest with you, I knew I was never going to have kids. There's no point in me having a uterus in the first place. And at this particular, um, you know, at this particular point, I had suffered for so many years and it got unbearingly out of control it's starting to interfere with my everyday life and just I just let's get it out I don't I don't need it anymore let's get it out so she said we're gonna have to do a uterine biopsy first to rule out cancer now 
they have to do it. There's no way around it. I said, just, I don't, I don't want extra tests. Let's just get it out. They said, no, 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 no. Because if you have uterine cancer, we run the risk of it spreading when we open you up and that kind of thing. And it can metastasize to, to other organs, metastasize to other organs of your body. And so they, and to cover their butt, they have to do it. So, so sad, too bad, zip it. It's going to get done. So she said, we can do it in the office or we can do it at the hospital under sedation. And I said, I'll probably have a panic attack. So let's just do it at the hospital. Um, like I said, I have a phobia for being a patient. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really good at it. You know, depending on what's wrong with me, I'm not that good at it. Um, I freak out. I start shaking. It's just, it's just a bad thing. So, um, what happened? So then they scheduled the uterine biopsy, went ahead under sedation, did it at the hospital. And then what happened? And then I said, let's just go ahead and get it out. Everything obviously came back and they have to do pregnancy tests, which at that point I had not had sex since dinosaurs roamed. So I knew I wasn't pregnant, but they still got to do it. So just got to suck it up, buttercup, do the requirements and just hush, just do it. So went ahead and got that done. Obviously it was negative. And so went ahead and um, scheduled surgery. And I said, the sooner the better, let's just get it over with because you know, it takes those of us who have fibromyalgia, it takes us a long time to heal. So the sooner we get the surgery done, the sooner I can start the healing process. So um, went ahead and, and got it done and my, they also removed my cervix and I didn't want them to remove my cervix. And she says, why not? I said, because there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. She said, right. But if I don't, I did a hysterectomy. If, if I don't take out the cervix also, that changes the entire scope of the surgery. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess you have to do what you have to do. So, um, she, my doctor said after the fact, well, okay, well, let me backtrack again. After surgery, you have to spend the night in the hospital. I was not down for that. I was don't going in semi panic mode. I do not want to do that. And my friend jumped my world. He said, if your doctor says you have to spend the night, you have to spend the night. And I was like, I don't want to spend the night. I want to be in my own bed. And he's like, it doesn't matter your doctor said you have to spend the night and so and I could have left AMA which is against medical um orders or against medical advice I should say it's AMA but you don't want to do that because I knew my doctor was really nice my surgeon doctor was really nice but I also know that I don't want to be on her bad side okay um but this is what happened with <laughs> uh me and my friend okay because I told him well, you're in Canada. What are you going to do about it? I don't want to spend the night. And he said, oh, you want to play that game? At that point, well, I'm addicted to double dogs, okay? They're really good. They are the bomb, okay? Chocolate cake and then filling and then chocolate cake on the bottom. It is held together and it's the freaking bomb, okay? Maybe it's an East Coast thing. I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's... Devil dogs, they're the freaking bomb. Well, he had been sending me some. So I said, well, you're, you know, you do what your doctor told you to do. And I said, what are you going to do about it? You're in Canada. And he said, you want to play that game? Do you want me to send you a box that used to have devil dogs in them? And I turned into a five-year-old and I'm going, no. He said, all right, then you do what your doctor told you to do. I heard a tone come out of his voice that I have never heard before. He wasn't playing when your doctor says do it do it i said well i want you to notate that i'm very upset about it and i want to be in my own bed and he said duly noted but you're gonna do what she told you to do <laughs> i'm like okay fine i don't have a choice <laughs> and, and like i said i don't want her mad at me can you imagine them calling her up after surgery and i sign myself out and they call her up at nine ten o'clock or whatever the time was that night and say just want to let you know that your your uh, patient just walked out and sh all hell would break loose and i'm not trying to get murdered by my surgeon it just wouldn't be a good idea so um she, she my doctor had made the comment 
the, I spent the night and it was fine. It, it was a newly remodeled. Um, she put me on the maternity floor because she didn't want me with my, you know, uh, with fibromyalgia. She doesn't want to risk me getting sick from other patients and, you know, that kind of thing. So she put me on the maternity ward, which I thought was clever and awesome. Um, and she came the next morning to see me and she said, your uterus was so big. It was I remember her telling somebody else that she had gray hair because of patients like me because she couldn't get my uterus out. She had to struggle and struggle. That's how freaking huge it was. Now you know why I had an accident because, you know, you've got an organ that's like huge pressing on things in your body that it's not supposed to be pressing on. You know what I'm saying? So, and I knew that it was massive because when I was released to go home, I'm in the shower, you know, they allow you to take a shower or whatever. I'm in the shower and I'm washing, again, this is a TMI thing, but I'm just be, keeping real with y'all. I'm washing the front of my girly bits, you know, and as I'm washing the front, I could feel the pain inside. So that was awful. I had to deal with that for a couple of days. And then I felt for women who have children how, this hurts like hell and I haven't had a kid. Oh my freaking God. My hat goes off to women who have a huge, or a human being come out of there because I had a uterus and it was awful. <laughs> it was just awful. And I asked her how many were in there. She said there were too many to count. They were not going to try to count them. That's how many were in there. Um. Wow. So... I remember this girl told me she had, I went to the gas station like way after the fact I, you know, was on the road to recovery and all this. She said, I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? The girl that works at the store. And I said, Oh, I had a hysterectomy. And by the way, I did retain my ovaries because I didn't want those taken out. I did not want to be on HRT the rest of my life, which is, um, hormone. What is that? HRT hormone response therapy or something. I am trying to remember. I think so. Um, it's the hormones you have to take for the rest of your days because they took your ovaries out. So I wanted to retain those. So those are in, thank goodness. And we're good on that. Um, what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, so the girl in the store was like, I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? I said, well, I had hysterectomy and you know, that kind of thing. And the other girl was staring at me. The other girl that was in the store with her and she goes, I want to be a part of that club. After the fact, I was thinking, nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be a part of that club like that. You do not want to feel like every single month somebody cut your lady bits with a freaking chainsaw. You don't want that. You don't want to have to spend money that you don't have on double packs of pads, tampons, super plus tampons, diva cups and everything else. You do not want to go broke buying feminine products every single month. You don't want to risk every time you go somewhere in public, you have an accident and everybody gets to see it. You don't want that. Okay. If you want a hysterectomy, that's perfectly fine. But baby, you don't want it to go about it the way that I went about it. It wasn't a choice the way I went about it, but you don't want that. I'm just telling you. It might sound good. Oh, you know, she doesn't get a period no more. I worked hard <laughs> to get that surgery. I suffered a great deal. You, trust me, you don't want it that way. You, you, I'm telling you, you don't want it that way. Okay. Um, that's yeah, no, <laughs> you know, you, you, you just don't want it that way. If you want a hysterectomy, that's fine, but just don't, don't. Don't think that it was, you know, it's right. It's a, it's a walk in the park or whatever, because it was a nightmare. It was a freaking nightmare. So, um, I'm not sure why that did that. Oh, I know why it's a notification on there anyway. So I'm doing really well. I, I haven't thought about my uterus since it's been gone Bye, sayonara, get the hell out of here. Um, so, you know, and I've saved exorbitant amounts of money not buying those things anymore in fact i gave the pads away the pads that i did have i gave them away to a girl that um 
works in a store that I used to frequent all the time. And I said, you know, here you go. I don't, these are expensive. I don't want to throw them away. I had surgery, so I don't need them. And the one girl said, well, we'll keep him here on the job just in case somebody, you know, has an issue at work. They'll, there'll be pads there. So I thought that was awesome. As long as people can use them, they're unopened. They're still in the pack. Everything's cool. I'm not going to throw them away. You know, that just doesn't make sense. So anyway, um, that's the story there. Um, yeah. I asked my doctor, because I worked in medical, so I'm curious about, obviously, medical things. And I asked, can I see my uterus when they take it out? And my surgeon was like, no. No. They cut it up, and they take it out that way. You don't, you don't want to see all that. <laughs> you know, if it was going to be, you know, whole, she might have been okay with it, taking a picture of it or something. But, but I did get to see my uterus when it was in there because when they did the surgery, they put cameras in there and took pictures, and I saw, I saw my insides. You know, so, um, which was really interesting. I found it interesting, um, really. So I saw a couple of, I don't know how you could describe it. If you imagine, um, I don't know. You imagine material with, with something poking out. I saw that poking through my uterus when I saw the inside of the, of the, um, you know, the, the pictures of my insides or whatever, but the rest of them you couldn't see. So there were like a couple of spots where you could see the protrusion, but that was pretty much it. And then you get to see other things, you know, your other organs, your bladder and your, you know, your part of my liver. I could see part, you know, that in the pictures. Um, some people have said, well, I want to see your pictures. I'm like, are you sure? Cause they're, they're kind of graphic. It, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I've assisted with two autopsies. So, it doesn't bother me, but I realize that a lot of people can't handle that. So are you sure you want to see that? <laughs> you know, I warn people ahead of time. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, I didn't have any, I had post-operative pain, but it didn't last for a really long time. Um, I made a real big mistake and I'm giving you a warning. Do not freaking do it this way. I had extremely no noisy neighbors at the time where I used to live. So my friend was kind enough, the one who ripped into me about, you do what your doctor told you to do. Um, he put me in a hotel because my neighbors were extremely loud and I don't need to hear that crap when I'm, you know, recovering from surgery. So the hotel thing was, they were ghetto. The people that worked in the, in the hotel were ghetto. It, they were loud. Oh my God. It was just, it was a bad situation, but we're not going to go there anyway. Um... So stayed in a hotel and what I should have done and I didn't and I regret, I regretted it. I should have went directly to Walmart. But the thing of it is, I didn't want to go to Walmart and stand in the line forever or wait an hour or whatever. I wanted a hot date with my bed. I wanted to go to bed like immediately. So I bypassed getting the medication. Do not do that. Do not freaking do that. I have a high pain tolerance, but I'm here to tell you, don't freaking do it because I suffered that day and the next day until I got the medicine in me there was a major difference once I took my pain meds don't do like I did get your medicine right away please and what you need to do is tell the pharmacy before you go check your medicine uh, go get your medicine um, make sure that you tell them that I just had surgery I need my meds pretty soon how soon can I get them and they will you know put a rush on it and get your I didn't know that at the time I know that now after the fact so, but anyway, um, so that's the story with that. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, the pain was short lived. I took my meds for like, I don't know. I think I took them all because you don't want to wean yourself off because it's a lot harder for the pain meds to work if the pain's already kicked in. So prevention is the key. If they give you a script, complete the whole script is what I'm going to advise you to do. Okay. That's, that's going to be your best bet. All right. You guys take care. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Love you.